It's the new hit list on 102.7 Kiss FM. My name is Kayla. Hi, Kayla. And look who's here. It's me, Abby Romeo. Oh, my gosh. Hi, Abby. Hi. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Abby is from Love on the Spectrum from Netflix. I am a huge fan. Thank you for coming. You are beautiful in person. Thank you. And I love that you're knitting. Thanks. <laughs> okay, so you have a new song. Yes, and I, I do. And I want to know all about it. But first, uh, how long have you been singing? I have been singing since age two years old when I first got diagnosed with autism. I could sing before I could talk. Wow. I like that. Uh, what does it feel like when you're it singing? It feels like my autism vanishes, and once the song is done, it returns. Okay. Okay. Um, when did you write your very first song? I was in a program called Spectrum Laboratory back in 2015, and my first ever song was called Love is Magic, and I worked on it with a guy named Garth Herberg. Okay. Nice. Okay. What about the song, The Girl Inside? Can you tell us about that? I wrote that? that song with a woman named Kaylee Yunkno, and it's about how autism feels like there's someone living inside me, and there's a negative autistic side of me and a positive neurotypical side of me, and those two battle off each other. Wow. Okay. Well, what about the most recent song? So it's called Categories, and mm -hmm. we're going to play it on the radio, which I'm so excited about. I'm so excited, too. <laughs> Why did you write Categories? I wrote this song with a woman named Casey Kelly, and it's about how the way my mind works. I put all the good things I like in one side and all the bad things I don't like in another side. Okay. What does this song mean to you? It means to help understand the world better and get my words out. Okay. I have to say that I love the song. It made me cry when I heard it. And when I saw the video, like, you are just beautiful, Abby. Thank you. So beautiful. Um, what about being on Love on the Spectrum? What is your favorite thing about it? My favorite thing about Love on the Spectrum is being is because, of course, I met my amazing boyfriend, David, and I got to go on an African safari for the first time. I saw that. How is he? He's great. Really? <laughs> When's the last time you've seen him? I saw him on Monday. We went to the L.A. Zoo. <gasps> oh, my gosh. I haven't been to the L.A. Zoo yet. Is it fun? Yes. Oh, my gosh. I love that. Um, okay, so you found love, mm -hmm. um, and I know there are so many people out here waiting to find love. What advice would you give to someone who is waiting for their perfect match? I find If I find someone on the spectrum, they need to find someone who is very kind and patient with them and has common interests and wow. understands the way their mind works. Because Dave and I, our interests are African wild animals <laughs> and going to the zoo. I love watching you guys interact. You guys seem like you're just so in love. It's so beautiful to watch. Thank you. Um, so today is World Autism Day. Yes, uh, it is. What would you like people to know about what it's like living with autism? The type of autism I have is called autism communication disorder. Sometimes my brain won't do what I'm telling it to do, and sometimes I have a hard time getting my words out, mm -hmm. but it's not as bad as it was. Okay. And I have a helper named Mary Romeo, and she helps me with my social media because I can't do all the editing and all the buttons. That part's very tricky. Yes, I'm sure it is. It's easy tricky for me, too. <laughs> well, I love that. Um, can you give a message to all of your fans that are listening right now? Thank you so much to all my fans and my amazing boyfriend, David. I feel like Ariel when she marries Prince Eric, but even though I'm not married yet, I used to feel like Ariel living in a world alone back when I was much younger, and now I feel like Cinderella at the ball. Thank you so much to all my amazing fans and my amazing boyfriend, David. Oh, I love that, Abby. Can I ask you one more question? So this show is all about favorite songs. Mm -hmm. And songs that we love to listen to. So what is your current favorite song that you want the whole world to know about? Do you have one? Um, Yours? Mine, of course. <laughs> listen to Categories, everyone, because that's my current favorite song right now. Yes, it is. <laughs> listen to Categories. Enjoy. Woo! Well, thank you for joining me, Abby. You're welcome. You are amazing. And I love that you're knitting right now because that makes me feel so calm, calm right now. <laughs> thank you. Have a good one. Thanks, you too. <laughs> All right, so now I have Christine, Abby's mom, with me here to talk about World Autism Day. Thank you so much for bringing Abby in here. Oh, it's a pleasure. Thank you so much. Um, I love, you know, the show. I love you guys. I think it's just so amazing that, uh, you know, Netflix is shedding light on what, it, on what it's like to have autism and them finding love. Um, today is World Autism Day, and what would you like everybody to know about it? You know, I think that it's a wonderful thing that uh, the undiagnosed population is is getting awareness and becoming diagnosed. People get into their 20s 
and they don't know they have sensory issues. They don't know why social interaction is so difficult. And they can be judged out in the world. And I think people need to be kinder and uh, more understanding that that brain is working differently than yours. So please don't judge it. <laughs> and that's a part of the new, I call it the new autism just because we've expanded our understanding of it. Yeah. However, at the same token, we have to be careful because as we examine sensory issues and sort of um, auditory sensitivities, we, with social media, start to look at it and sort of examine ourselves in a deeper way. Mm -hmm. And then people are saying, I think I'm autistic. Wow. And we got to be careful of that part because everyone has sensory sensitivities and preferences. Yeah. So what's the difference between those two so that the people that really need help um, can get the help they need? Um, there's other populations where it's more obvious impairments, where they need speech and OT. I mean, my story is just that Abby is, to me, a miracle because mm -hmm. language and interaction was so terribly difficult for her. Yeah. And she's blossomed so much since age 18. So from 18 to 25, but we've never stopped interventions. Yeah. That means OT and speech and services. But other people need more support. They need more understanding. They need a sensory break at work. They need to be able to, you know, if there's a loud noise, it might startle them. they got to go take a break, and that's not a sensitivity I might have. Mm -hmm. But if we can all be understanding of those things, then everybody wins. Yeah. You know? Absolutely. So I hope that everyone kind of – the number one thing is just to be kind. Yeah. No matter where someone's coming from, um, be kind mm -hmm. and understand that people um, are doing the best they can. Yeah. Um, it's, I know it must be a challenge for Abby, but also it could be a challenge for you, you oh, know, it's with uh, <laughs> being a caretaker. Um, what would you say was like the biggest challenge for you? What have you learned about yourself during this whole process? Um, and yeah. I, I have a compassion for all people, especially people who struggle with social interaction. I am the most social person I know. <laughs> I can go into a strange room and be best friends with everyone by the end of the day. Uh, but there's people that neurologically can't do that. Social interaction is painful, difficult, unpleasant. And I would love to create a program for that population yeah. to exercise social engagement, to give them a little bit more confidence so that they can move forward through yeah. that because the world is social. Yes. So I have learned to understand that part of this story um and i think that's through abby mm -hmm. um, but what i'd like people to know is is that there's such a vast landscape of autism today we don't really have language to identify people's what i call skill sets not what they can't do but what they can do mm -hmm. i like to look at it in a more positive way so if we can honor what people can do um, we can educate people um, with their expectation yeah if you have a person of high intelligence autism that person might be a scientist. If you have a person that's in, the, in between, they need help talking. Mm. Uh, people sometimes in my social media don't understand that when I'm prompting Abby, it's to help with expressive language. Mm -hmm. I'm not doing that because I'm controlling mother. Trust me, I'd rather be in Cabo having a margarita <laughs> on the beach. But since that is not happening, I will be helping Abby <laughs> with prompting. That's what we all want right now. <laughs> so so I, hope, I hope people kind of understand that when someone says they're autistic or a person with autism because there's preferences in that language, that that means a whole varied amount right. of skills and um, struggles. Yeah. And until the language gets more specific, it's kind of a it's a very kind of undefined world. Right. And I think that's people definitely need to get educated more about it. Yeah. You know, some people with autism drive cars, mm -hmm. are married and have families. Well, that's what you were saying. You said um, some they go on to be scientists. Correct. And there's so many different things that they, they have aspirations and dreams. What about Abby? Like, what does she want to do with her life? Well, right now it's sort of happening. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, that. honestly, I, I couldn't be more excited. In season one of Love on the Spectrum, they interview everybody and they interviewed me and they said, what are your hopes and dreams for Abby in the future? And I just burst out crying and I said, I hope the world will be nice to her. Mm. You know. Are you okay? Yeah. <laughs> and because look now, everyone the, loves the world, her. Oh, it can be a really nasty yeah. place. I mean, look at social media. You really see. Are you sad? No, I'm not sad. I'm actually so proud of you. And look what she's doing now. Like, I'm following her here to your studio. <laughs> so... I think that um, how far she has come is a true testament. So people that 
Abby said, I have autism communication disorder. And the reason we sort of add that in there is so that people understand that conversations are really hard for her. Reciprocal and expressive language are a struggle. And so that's why people will make judgments and they'll say, you know, you should let her drive a car. And I'm like, that's not going to happen. That's not where we're at. Those are the haters. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> I try to love on everybody, even if they don't feel in it back, because that's where we start change. Yeah. And so that's. It is just so amazing to see. And Abby, your song is going to be heard by millions of people ah. in L.A., tonight and it's going to be amazing and you are such an inspiration and I hope that anybody out there listening knows that they can do whatever the heck that they want Anything, honestly that nothing is impossible guys, if you just keep trying and if you have a support system like Abby's mom cheering you on lean into the people that love you and and you can make things happen honestly I'm a single mother I have a full-time job I have another son I've been a single mom since she was six and if I can help facilitate her to have her a presence in the world. I know other people can too. And don't ever compare yourself to anyone else. You look at yourself and you go, what is my next step? You know, or what is my child or my loved one's next step? And whatever that is, you say, I'm going to hit that. Abby learned to tie her shoe when she was nine years old. Wow. That was one of my victory moments where I thought I was going to throw the shoe out the window after, you know, two years of trying. Mm -hmm. But we never gave up. Nine years old. Well, thank you so much, Christine, for sharing your story. Abby, again, thank you for sharing your story. And hey, making me you're cry welcome. Every year. <laughs> it was such a pleasure meeting both of you. It was awesome. Thank you for having us. No problem. It's a new hit list.